Hi, and welcome to the CDJ 3000 Masterclass. My name is Pulse, and I'm gonna walk you through Pioneer DJ's newest flagship player. We'll talk about the differences and improvements from its predecessors, and give you some tips and insights on how to get the most out of this deck. At first glance, the CDJ 3000 seems to be similar in size to the CDJ 2000 Nexus 2, and placing the units side by side shows the dimensions have only increased slightly. The layout should be familiar as we've maintained a consistent form factor, which has been part of the CDJ DNA since our first player, the CDJ 500, back in 1994. Some of the big changes you will notice right away are this 9 inch touchscreen, which is 150% brighter than its predecessor, as well as the gorgeous new on jog display. Your hands will also feel the differences with a redesigned jog wheel, which is smoother, quieter, and features a touch latency 25% faster than the Nexus 2. For tighter response, performance buttons such as play, cue, and hot cues have been improved to now last over 1 million presses. The aluminum top plate not only improves the look and feel of the player, but provides additional durability for touring and club environments. And speaking of touring, the CDJ3000 was designed with those tough conditions in mind. The sealed design is perfect for keeping out the ply dust at Burning Man, one of the most aggressive DJ environments CDJs have been to. Another improvement we've made is the new V-Lock IEC cable, so you won't accidentally have a player come unplugged mid-gig. One of the biggest changes to the CDJ3000 is something you won't see, the MPU. Featuring two multi-core ARM Cortex CPUs, this new microprocessor is the powerhouse behind lightning-fast loading of tracks and hotcues, high-quality key shift and key sync, plus touch cue and touch preview. 32-bit processing and digital audio converters provide premium sound whether you're playing at a festival, club, wedding, or streaming online from home. The new MPU also provides expanded Pro DJ Link networking capabilities. With a new gigabit Ethernet connection, not only have we increased the maximum number of players to six, but the amount and type of data transmitted, including phrase information for record box lighting and show control. Enough about the specs, let's look at some of these amazing features. But before we do, I'll give you this disclaimer. To make the most of a CDJ, you'll want to prepare and export your music with Recordbox. While we'll cover the CDJ3000 integration with Recordbox as a controller later in this masterclass, what you'll be seeing on the players is mostly with sources that have been prepared in Recordbox. So let's jump in. The display on the CDJ3000 is front and center to everything a DJ does in this player, so the high resolution, high refresh rate display makes it easy to do just that. Pairing the traditional encoder knob and buttons to the right of the display with a touch interface, navigation and control is intuitive and quick. To match the new waveform options in Recordbox, the CDJ3000 can also display the new three-band waveform, with each frequency of the song being represented by a different color. Lows are in blue, mids in amber, and highs in white, providing a better overview of the sound level of each frequency band. Of course, the traditional RGB and blue waveform options are still available. Turn the encoder knob to move through the six levels of zoom, which provide plenty of options to see a wide view of the song or really accurate detail for finding and setting the right cue point or for adjusting the song's beat grid on the fly by pressing and holding the encoder, then turning the knob using the on-screen controls to tweak the position. Press and hold the encoder again to save and exit the grid. The familiar track overview waveform is present. However, the larger size offers improved visibility for memory and hot cue markers, with time text displayed beside each minute marker for a clearer view. Not only does the overview still allow you to touch anywhere in the waveform for a needle countdown, but now the number of bars for the play position are shown. In addition, Touch Cue sends audio over the Pro DJ Link to Link Cue compatible mixers, the DJM V10 and DJM 900 XS2. Now you can preview any portion of the song without having to load it up to another deck. On the CDJ2000 Nexus, the phase meter was introduced to help with beat matching, and a second option was added to the Nexus 2. But the CDJ3000 takes it a step further with the stacked waveform display, similar to what you find in DJ software. When linked with other CDJ3000 players, the waveform from the master deck will be shown above the large waveform, complete with memory, hot cue, and loop information for easier mixing and beat matching. To the left of the phase meter or stacked waveform, the beat countdown shows you how many bars or beats until the next memory point or needle countdown point on both the current track and the master deck. Of course, the display offers all the familiar deck and track information you need, the player number, quantize and beat jump status and values, auto cue and auto hot cue status, track time, either elapsed or remaining, 
continuous or single playback mode, pitch, pitch range, current tempo, master tempo or key sync status, and a dynamically updating key value. Looking to the top of the screen, we can see which source the current song is playing from, as well as the album art, track name, time, and original tempo and key. Tapping this bar will drop open the info panel, which also shows us the artist, album, playlist, label, bit rate, date added to your collection, rating, and comments. We'll talk about these other buttons a bit later when we cover some of the performance controls. Above the screen, you'll see direct function buttons for source, browse, tag list, playlist, search, and menu. The source buttons, which used to be down the left side of the display on the CDJ2000 players, are now consolidated into one source button, which brings up an easy navigation view with details about the available sources, including the number of songs and playlists, the date the drive was last updated, plus the size and space available. Here you can also set the background color for the drive, which changes the source icon background, as well as the illuminated ring around the USB port or the line below the SD card slot. This helps identify which source is which at a glance. There's also a My Settings Load button, but we'll talk about My Settings more in detail shortly. Upon selecting a source, you're taken into Browse Mode. At the left of the screen, you'll see different browse options which can be configured within Rekordbox. You can select the category by using the encoder knob or swiping and tapping on the screen. Let's navigate into a playlist. In any view, once we're at the song level, you'll see a list of 10 or 12 songs, depending on the font size, which can be changed to one of three options here. One of the most powerful features in the browse mode for the CDJ3000 is the new touch preview function. Tap and hold anywhere on the track waveform to hear that portion of the song play over the link cue. Scrub back and forth to hear a different part of the song. Like the touch cue, this can be done while the song is playing and it won't affect the main audio output. You can scroll the list by swiping on the screen or by rotating the encoder. If you have a really long playlist and want to quickly move through it, press and hold the encoder to access the page jump or alphabet jump, depending on which column you have selected for sort. And speaking of sorting, tap any column header with the arrows to sort by that criteria. The CDJ3000 now also has reverse sorting. Tap again to toggle the sort. An additional column of information can be displayed by tapping this drop down menu. Same as the browse option, the choices here can be customized for each drive within Rekordbox. To show more information for each track, tap the info button at the top right. As you scroll through your list, this panel will update with the info we saw earlier. Pressing the encoder or tapping the load button on screen will load the track to the deck. While being able to browse your device is now quicker and easier, there are more tools inherited from the CDJ2000 Nexus 2 which have been improved upon, namely the track filter. By pressing and holding the track filter button to the right of the screen, you enter the track filter edit page. The first page you'll see has the options to filter by a certain percentage of the BPM by key and a neighboring harmonic match, a star rating, or track color. You can tap the master player button to automatically have the values from the current master deck populate the BPM and key values for quicker matching. Tap the check boxes to the left of any of these items to enable that filter. At the top right, you'll see a button for my tag. This page gives you the four My Tag categories from within Rekordbox and up to 50 tags in each to select. Mix and match these filters either with the BPM key page or on their own, and when you're done, press the Track Filter button to exit and the filter will be applied. You'll see the number of songs matching the filter criteria along with a little filter icon so you know it's enabled. By toggling the track filter on and off, you can see just how many songs are filtered out. One of the other things you'll notice is some tracks have the key highlighted in green. This is the traffic light function which shows compatible harmonic matches for the current master deck. We'll talk more about harmonic mixing and key shifting a bit later. Songs on your list which appear in dark green have been loaded to a deck and played for at least one minute. If you're browsing a playlist, you can toggle a single song to show as played or unplayed by pressing the menu button and tapping OK to confirm the change of play state. The last thing to tell you about on the browse page is the tag function. Pressing the tag track button will add that song to the tag list and you'll see a little check icon appear to the left of the name. The tag list is a temporary holding place for songs you might want to play later. Press the tag list button to open up that screen. Loading a song from the tag list doesn't remove it from the tag list, but you can do that by pressing and holding the tag track remove button. But another cool feature of the tag list is that you can convert a tag list to a playlist by tapping the menu button, then tapping OK. You can also use this menu to clear all tracks from the tag list. The playlist button is a direct shortcut to your playlists, same as if you navigated there from the browse screen. The search button opens the track search page. 
Here, an on-screen keyboard facilitates easy searching through your currently selected device, allowing for mixed field searching in one string. Regardless of which field contains the text you're searching, you can find exactly what you're looking for. As we've seen, the menu button serves a variety of purposes. In fact, on the main playback view, you can see previously loaded songs just in case you need to go back. The menu button also serves to open the utility menu by pressing and holding. Here you can change a variety of the settings directly on the player, but as previously mentioned, many of these settings can also be loaded to, from or saved to my settings stored on a device. I'll point out a couple of the important items here. On the DJ settings page, play mode can be changed between single and continuous mode. Single will stop at the end of a song, whereas continuous will allow non-stop playback song after song, depending of course on your auto cue setting. On the Pro DJ link page, the player number is something I prefer to set manually so it matches the configuration of the decks and channels I use on the mixer. If you want to change it but can't, you'll need to first remove any devices and disconnect the ethernet cable. The duplication function allows you to force your my settings to be loaded across specific players or all linked players, instead of doing it one by one. The last item I'll point out here on the system page is the output attenuator. Check that you have the same value set for all your CDJs. This is a set it and forget it kind of thing. Before we move down the player into the performance section, I want to tell you about the shortcut button. The reason I glossed over some of the options in this utility menu is they have controls on the shortcut page. Here you'll see the preferences for the waveform and phase meter, your hot cue auto load preferences, LCD and jog LCD brightness, quantize beat and beat jump values, as well as quick buttons to change the waveform color and playhead position. This last one is a new feature of the CDJ3000 that offsets the play position so it's three quarters of the way to the left rather than directly in the middle, showing more of the upcoming waveform. The last two buttons on the shortcut page are to load or save my settings to that device. So what is loaded when we call the my settings from a drive? Let's look in Rekordbox to show you exactly all the settings you can configure there so you know what items are stored. First, make sure Rekordbox is in export mode by clicking the drop down at the top left. Open the preferences and click the DJ system button, then click the my settings tab and the plus icon beside player, then the plus icon beside each of the child items. Here you'll see the full list of settings you can configure. Tweak everything to your preference, then click apply on all connected devices. The next time you go to the CDJ3000, loading the my settings will configure the CDJ to your liking with the press of a button. Moving back to the player, let's look at the new jog. As mentioned, it's redesigned to not only be smoother and more responsive, but also quieter. Take a listen to this new jog in comparison to the CDJ2000 Nexus 2. Like its predecessor, the CDJ3000 Jog has tension adjust to tune it for your preference. But unlike the 2000 family, this Jog features a beautiful LCD that shows album artwork, a cue indicator ring, playback motion indicator, vinyl and slip status, as well as master and sync status. The blue highlights on the edge of the display also show when the vinyl touch has been registered. Speaking of which, the Jog still has both vinyl and CDJ mode, where the touch sensitive top is disabled for those who prefer the legacy feel of just pitch bending with the Jog wheel. DJs who are into scratching and performance with the jog may want to adjust the brake and startup speed to better emulate the lag from a turntable motor. You can fine tune the setting the way you like it with the adjustment on the player with the ability to select whether the knob controls touch, release, or both from the utility menu. As mentioned earlier, the controls on the CDJ have retained a consistent layout for ease of use and familiarity, but the evolution of technology and feedback from DJs have brought forth new features and improvements. A perfect example of this lives just below the screen with the eight new hotkey buttons. Formerly with only four buttons and a bank toggle button on the CDJ2000 Nexus 2, the new arrangement makes for easier performance and direct access to all eight hotkeys. Not only that, but the buttons are now rated for one million presses. That's a lot of finger drumming. Thanks to the new MPU, a high bitrate song with eight hotkeys can load up to seven times faster than the previous generation CDJ, and with all hotkeys set to auto load in the preferences, it's ready to perform in a flash. If you're not familiar, hotkeys allow you to set memory points anywhere in a song and the player will jump to them instantly when you press the button. To delete a hotkey, simply hold the delete button while pressing the corresponding hotkey button. 
But hotkeys are for more than just jumping through a song. You can also store hot loops, perfect for having a loop ready to go at a moment's notice. While we're on the topic of hotkeys, I'll cover memory points. These are similar to hotkeys in that they are marker points in a song, but the difference is they aren't performance oriented. I personally use memory points as the main cue point for a song. You can call them using the call arrow buttons, but unlike a hot cue, this is not instant and on beat. To store a new memory point, set a main player cue, then press the memory button. To delete it, press the delete button. You can also store a loop to memory, same as hot loops. Just set the loop, then press memory. Another use for either hot cues or memory points is visual markers to reference different parts of your songs. Add a color coding to indicate the breakdown or mix out point. The color can be set within record box. Also within Rekordbox, you can create what's known as an active loop on a memory point. Click on the orange loop icon to change it to red, which indicates an active loop. The player will now automatically loop when it reaches that part of the song. No need to worry about a song ending early or a short outro. The play and cue buttons also get mashed a lot, so like the hot cue buttons, they've also been redesigned to withstand 1 million presses. Setting the main cue is as simple as moving the jog or pausing the track at the position you want to set the cue, then press the cue button. The search and track search buttons have a couple of functions besides the obvious ability to skip or scan through songs. When held down and combined with the rotation of a jog, they become a hyper search or hyper track search function. When the player is paused, or if you want to make a fine adjustment to a loop's in or out point, the search buttons can more accurately step through the song. Also to the left of the jog, you'll find a reverse paddle. Pull down to lock the player in reverse playback, or toggle it up temporarily to engage slip reverse. I'll go more into how slip works in just a bit. Continuing up the player, you'll find two dedicated beat jump buttons. These are in addition to the on-screen controls available by pressing the beat jump button here. But these hardware buttons give you direct access to your preferred beat jump value, which can be set on the shortcut page. But if you want to change it even quicker, here's a trick. Hold the call button and press the beat jump buttons to change the smaller or larger values without even opening the shortcut page. Above this, you'll find the looping section. While the classic manual in and out buttons remain, the single auto beat loop button of the CDJ 2000 Nexus 2 has been replaced by two dedicated auto beat loop buttons for four and eight beats. Those buttons also perform a second function to halve or double the loop length. And unlike the Nexus 2, the loop will not restart when you change its length. When a loop is engaged, the screen will automatically change over to beat loop mode, giving direct access to quarter, half, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32 beat loops. Tapping the 1, 2 button at the far right opens a loop panel new to the CDJ3000. With non-standard loop lengths of 3 quarters, 1, 3 halves, 3, 5, 6, 7, and 9, you can create polyrhythmic loops. You'll also notice that the on-screen loop controls no longer cover half the waveform thanks to the larger display. If you want to move a loop once it's engaged, pressing the beat jump buttons will move the loop forward or backward in the track by the amount set on the beat jump. Pressing the reloop exit button will exit an active loop or jump you back to a loop that was previously active. You can see the available reloop by the icon below the waveform here. The time mode auto cue button serves dual purposes. Pressing the button briefly changes the time display from elapsed to remaining or vice versa. The same thing that can be done by tapping the time on the display itself. Or if you press and hold the time button, the auto cue function will be toggled. Auto cue will automatically set the main player cue point using the setting preference to either cue the first memory point or the first portion of audio surpassing the defined threshold as selected in the utility menu. The auto cue function also serves to prevent a newly loaded song from loading and playing right away. Quantize is a great tool to help you snap your looping, hot cues and more to the beat grid for perfect timing. With a quantized value of 1, all of your actions will be on beat. When it's enabled, it will align the playback whether you press the button a bit early or a bit late. But the value can be shortened to a more dynamic performance or disabled completely for no limits. The CDJ2000 Nexus introduced slip mode, and the 3000 carries that function forward. Basically, slip allows you to perform other functions on the player while the main audio position continues in normal time behind the scenes. Whether you hit the pause button to create a break effect, 
scratch the audio, loop, engage the reverse, or jump to a hot cue. Slip will jump you back to the play point as if you would never stop playback. This gives you the flexibility to be creative without losing your position in the song. When slip is engaged, you'll also notice the on-screen beat loop button borders change from orange to blue to indicate they are now slip loops. With smaller values of 1 16th, 1 8th, 1 quarter, half, 1, 2, and 1 third and 3 quarters, the slip loop acts more like a roll function. Engaging only when the button is held, this can be used to creatively build and break the beat. Another on-screen performance feature is key shift. In key shift mode, the display shows three buttons connected by a bar, indicating the amount of shift. You can shift the key up or down by a semitone each time you tap one of the outer buttons, or press the central button to reset to the original key. A green key label indicates a harmonic match. The new key is shown at the lower right, and the original key is shown on the reset button, as well as the top of the screen. The new MPU provides a more natural sounding key change over a wider range of steps. Manually shifting the key can change the mood of a song to emphasize a build or add drama. Or you can use it to simply change the key for a better harmonic mix. But there's another new function on the CDJ3000. Now you can synchronize the key of two songs with the press of just one button. The key of the song will automatically be shifted to match the key or harmonically compatible key of the master deck, depending on which is closer. In addition to the new key sync, the CDJ3000 also has beat sync. This feature was first introduced in the CDJ2000 Nexus and uses the beat grid analysis from Rekordbox to easily synchronize the tempo at the press of a button. For those who still prefer to beat match manually, the pitch fader gives up to 0.02% accuracy at the 6% range, or switch to 10, 16, or the 100% wide range for a broader pitch and more creative transition options and effects. The tempo of the synchronized decks will follow the master decks tempo automatically for easy mixing and genre transitions. A reset button gets you back to 0% no matter where you are in the pitch fader. Opposite to how the key shift function works, master tempo locks the key of the audio when you speed up and slow down the song. This is handy to avoid hearing the warble of pitch bend when you're manually beat matching. Or you just don't want to hear the audio change pitch to sound like the chipmunks as you speed it up. The master deck selection can be switched manually by pressing the master button, or automatically when a track ends or enters a loop. A linked mixer will also facilitate the master deck switching by sharing information about the position of the faders for on-air status, another cool feature I'll dig into in a minute. Added on the CDJ2000 Nexus 2, the instant doubles feature automatically loads the same track playing on the master deck and matches the pitch settings, so DJs looking to beat juggle can quickly mirror another player by simply pressing and holding the sync button on any linked player. Link is something I've mentioned a few times already, but you may not know what it is or how it works. ProDJ Link uses the Ethernet connection on the back of the player, allowing them to communicate and share music from their connected drives, as well as phase meter, waveform, key sync, beat sync, instant doubles, my settings, and more. Two players can be connected directly, or for more advanced setups, a gigabit Ethernet switch or router can link multiple CDJs and a compatible DJM. Linking your mixer provides some awesome additional features, such as the previously mentioned Q-Link function to preview songs or the needle search. Effects which are quantized to the beat grid of the song, automatic master deck switching based on the fader or crossfader position, and on-air status, which turns the jog ring red to let you know which CDJ is currently playing live. The Pro DJ Link can also connect up to two computers with record box in export mode, wired or wirelessly, to act as additional music sources. Switch record box to Pro DJ Link lighting mode and the phrase data from the players can control a beat length lighting show automatically. For more on record box lighting functions and Pro DJ Link lighting, please check out our website or the YouTube channel. On the topic of music sources, the CDJ features a USB port and SD card slot, both capable of sharing high quality music across up to six players. Because it can be confusing in a busy DJ booth with up to 12 devices available, it's possible to accidentally remove a drive that's in use. Should you press the stop button or open the door in an SD card slot when there's a song playing from that source on any player, the audio will drop to a lower level to warn you that if you continue, the music will fully stop. Releasing the stop button or closing the door allows the music to carry on. Should you skip over the stop button completely and remove a USB drive while it's in use, there's no more worry about the 4-beat emergency loop. The CDJ3000 now buffers an entire song to memory and will continue playing when the source drive is removed, or if the link between players fails. The yellow exclamation mark in the corner alerts you to this, and I will note that we don't encourage it to prevent corruption of your drives, but just know it exists as a failsafe. 
I've already shown you how to set the My Settings for your device within Rekordbox, but there are some other things you can configure on the drive for optimal use on the CDJ. Connect the drive to your computer and click the name of the drive under the Devices branch of the tree at the left. In the panel to the right, you can set the name of the device, the background color, as well as preferences for the waveform color and position, the overview waveform type, and key display format. But don't miss out on the tabs at the top. On the Category tab, you can select the options available on the main browse level of the CDJ. Click an inactive category at the left, then click the arrow to move it to the right, and you can move it up and down per your order preference. Same thing for the Sort tab. These sort options are what were available in the drop-down in the browser of the CDJ. Add whichever criteria you need to help you sort the music on the player. The Column tab sets the default subcolumn info to appear to the right of the song name. On the Color tab, you can rename the color labels which are used by Rekordbox Track Coloring so you have something more meaningful for each color. Finally, the My Settings tab is not for changing the values, but rather to display what your preferences are. Don't forget to safely eject the drive before removing it from your computer. Rekordbox for iOS has also been improved and works as a great source for the CDJ3000. Connecting by Wi-Fi, a camera connector kit via USB, or Ethernet adapter, these reliable connection methods now allow for higher bandwidth communication, providing greater support of high-quality audio file types within the app. Loading songs is easy and intuitive from the app or the screen of the CDJ, just like using a USB drive. Learn more about the Rekordbox mobile app at Rekordbox.com. The CDJ3000 isn't just a player. We've already seen how you can link to Rekordbox in export mode, but you can also connect to Rekordbox in performance mode to use it as an HID controller. But the choices don't stop there. Virtual DJ and Algorithms DJ both have CDJ3000 HID integration, with Traktor and Serato DJ Pro coming later in 2021. There's one last trick I'd like to teach you before signing off. Using the Pro DJ Link bridge drivers, you can directly connect one device by USB, we recommend this typically being the mixer, and all players that are linked to that mixer can then also communicate with Rekordbox for either export or performance mode control. No need to connect a mess of USB cables anymore. Thanks again for joining me for this masterclass. If you have any questions about the CDJ3000 or other Pioneer DJ products, please visit us at pioneerdj.com.